Hello, hello, hello. Welcome. Uh, just a second. Okay. Uh, welcome, everyone, to my stream. The third stream of the series. Uh, today we are doing round three as snarky, of Snarky Summer series, which is a series of virtual coding competitions. Each competition is independent from the others. It's not like the elimination rounds, but uh, there are five of them, and each round is 80 minutes long, and it has six problems. Uh, and today I'm going to do the sort of them. <sighs> Hello to everyone. And yep, so I'm going to start soon in several minutes. In the meantime, uh, there are some questions in the chat. So one question was about live on YouTube, I'm not sure exactly why. I mean, I'm streaming on Twitch only as of now, and I hope that it's not that hard. To follow me on Twitch, I think the interface is pretty nice. Um, And about the bitrate, yeah, uh, I assume that maybe you have to be a Twitch affiliate to be able to to have an option for your viewers to change the bitrate. I'm not sure about that. And you have to stream seven times in a month to do that, to be an affiliate, to apply for an affiliate. And I have not streamed seven times a month in any month, but maybe I should do it this month. Yep. Mm. The sound could be from my laptop, but I'm not sure about that. I hope. Yeah, let me see. Uh, let me see, we're gonna start soon, don't worry. Actually, I'm going to try some options. So can anyone tell if the sound is better now or is it worse? Okay, people say this is better. Fine. Yeah, maybe I should have done it two streams ago, but anyway, that's totally fine. Mm. Okay.
Yeah. I have added an option, a filter, which is like noise. I don't know how uh, it's too sad. I have it in Russian, but it's just removing the noise, whatever. I guess I should have looked into it before. Anyway, uh, yeah, time to start. Let me just do one more thing. Um, sorry about the wait. Going to start soon. Yep. All right. I'm all ready. The end time is actually 23 hours. It's 11 p.m. Right now it's 10 p.m. Moscow time, 10.04 basically, but I'm starting a bit earlier than the actual finish. Just because starting at 11 p.m. is a bit too much. It's a bit late. Uh, all right, so I guess I'm ready to start. So I will start at 22.05. Oh, we have 22.05 already. Okay. I will start in 30 seconds then. And once again, just like the previous times, I will not be reading the chat during the round. So feel free to discuss whatever you want, whatever I am doing, whatever you want to discuss about the problems. And also, again, I will be translating the problems to English with an automatic translation. Hopefully, it will not be as bad as... Uh, I mean, it was not bad last time, but I was not, too, not, not being careful reading the problems. Hopefully, I can be better this time. Uh, thanks for all the wishes uh, of good luck. And yeah, 15 seconds, whatever. Live. All right. Mm, okay. Let's go. <sighs> Translating all the problems to, into English. The first step. Okay. Uh, this should be not too hard, but maybe not the first problem to be solved. Maybe it's not that easy, whatever. Nine. Okay, so we cover some rectangles, and if rectangle does not intersect any previous rectangles, no, yeah, any previous rectangles, they add it to the set. And we want to find all the added rectangles. Mm -hmm. I don't like this one, to say the least.
Okay. Maybe someone solved something already? No. Negative zero, okay. Nice. Oh, picture. This is a large one. Yeah, okay. So just the total over all rectangle overall triangles. It should be easy. But still. Maybe not the first problem to be solved. Okay, E. Mm. 500-500. It looks like I can do that. How to get wrong answer on this one though? Nine and eight, two, four, four, three, five, three. Too easy. Mm, I guess I should do this. Oh, non-decreasing. Okay, 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 okay. Read the problem statements. I do that once again. Okay. Then it's not that easy. Okay. Um, But still easy, right? But this one is not good. Um, DP of wait, so I have to, it has to be three parameters, right? Yeah. And I cannot just, kind of can, but don't want to make a 500 cube array. So it has to be, I have to remember the last number and the total XOR at the moment. So guess whatever. Um, mm -hmm. 
Okay. Okay, not the best variable names. Last number and take the p of n and one j and x is it good? Maybe okay. Okay, I guess it should be fast enough. Uh, go. Okay, what's next? F, right? We have the first problem solved today. Um, okay, F doesn't look mm, doesn't look trivial. Also, the samples are super weak. Should be the end night. Yeah, okay. Okay, what about this problem? Well, this is just some events, right? I mean, that should be easy, I think. Oh, nine, sure. <laughs> if I understand the problem correctly, might not be the case. As we all know, So it has to be the area. How do I calculate the area in general? It's just some quadratic function, right? Yeah. So if I'm, if I have some if I have some D which is the length of the side. Then I have H here, and I cut it Y. What do I get from that? Uh, this side is 
d times h minus y over h times h minus y, right? And also over 2, I guess. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm, let's just be sure. Uh, so I only want to know that this, like, I want to know this and this, I want to know this, right? The length of the side and the height of the triangle. And then, Whatever. Okay. Uh, I read this one. Also has to be like this. Something like that, maybe. Mm. And also this. Conversion to double from one one. Yeah. Not good. Uh, doesn't look right to me. Yeah, because I must up the order. <sighs> okay. Looks good now. A very large picture, just in case you don't see it well. What next? Okay, D and also F. Everyone's solving F. I think I... I feel like this problem appeared before, maybe even in this series, which would be ridiculous, but maybe I just remember incorrectly. But it... it looks familiar.
Okay. What do we have? We have A. Well, A looks like you just find any point which has the shape. You just draw it. Okay, cool. We have our second problem today. Okay. So just find find any point which is like the center, like the middle, the center of this cross. And then just cross it out, I guess. But how do I like I have to do some kind of BFS, but I'm not sure how, how I can do it. Oh, 2K lines. Lexicographically smallest, okay. That's actually very important. Smallest, okay. I don't really like it. Oh, I don't think this, I don't, I guess I should solve F. Even though I don't like it a lot, but yeah. I guess the best problem to be solved of the remaining ones. So, is it actually like this? Yeah, okay. All knights start moving at the same speed for each knight, the direct direction to which in which he moves initially is set. If the knight reaches the end of the road, turns around and continues to move. If two knights meet, a short battle occurs. Okay, so for the end's knight, so there are some knights going to the right, and there are some knights going to the left. So zero is for the left and one is for the right. And here the probability is one half for in both cases because you have to beat just one knight. And here the first and second knights meet first and then you beat the winner of those. And the question is, how do we find, like, what could be the number of knights we have to beat? So some knights are moving to the left, and some are moving to the right. So I am the last knight, and if some knight to the left of me is going to the right, I will have to fight them in any case. But if a knight is going to the left, this knight could beat some of the knights which are going to the right. And also if that knight beats all all the left, all the knights to the left, then yeah, okay. So I guess it's some kind of DP. We have to, we can go from right to left and maintain the number of knights which are moving to the left. And then if a knight is moving to the left as well, then all. But then it's also the same. They, all, all those knights nice moving to the left will have to fight each other. Yeah, but I guess it doesn't matter, right? Yeah. I feel like I've solved this problem before. It's a weird feeling. 
And I say, but I guess when you have solved a lot of problems, it's also understandable. So. We are standing at the rightmost knight, and we have zero knights moving to the left, and we have to beat one of them. There are some probabilities, right? It's not super easy. Wow. What, what? Uh, it should be the probability and the expected. Wait, 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 wait. I guess it should be the probability to... to be in that state, and also the probability to win all the battles in this state, right? So I have to maintain two values. So this is like probability. Uh, B and probability to win. The probability to be in this state is one, probability to win this state is also one. Oh, so it has to be, so we'll have one, one more knight. Simple win probability, okay. And in case the knight is moving to the right. So one option is we, yeah, we fight with that knight, and one option is this one loses. So we just go to this state, and another option is this one wins. So we just go to this state, but the win probability is, is, is okay for us, right? Yes. And then eventually, oh, but it has to be divided by two because, yeah, it's easy to mess this up, but anyway. And if you have zero, then we will something like that. And what is DP? Yes, should you win? This is a messy problem. I don't know. Anyone? Okay, so everyone solves F. Okay, so here it's one force, right? Both go to the left, then it's like that, and then here it could be so it's three eighths, right? Something like that. Well, it looks at least 
somewhat correct. Let's try. 20 minutes is not... 20 penalty minutes is not too bad. Hmm. Okay, A, B, C. Kevin tries A. Indar tries B. Some people try C. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's fine. It's nice. We have a dessert problem. We have three more problems to go. Okay, for now I don't have... Many ideas about this problem. So we have a direct cyclic graph, and we have to pick some vertices, some subset of vertices. We does not have any incoming edges, and the average. Like the sum of pi over the sum of ti is as high as possible, right? So it's, I mean, it's not even a tree. I feel like it could be some maybe binary search, and then it also could be some, I don't know, maximum flow, but it's not easy. I mean, if it's, if it's the way I think about this problem, it kind of reminds me about the problem, the hard life problem from a very old nuke contest, but in this case it's it's not easy at all. Oh, problem B has like 20, 12 seconds time limit, okay. <laughs> also probably not easy. So we put some rectangles. Wait, wait, wait. So this problem has to be solved online, kind of. Because you cannot just solve it offline because you don't know the set of rectangles, which is which like you don't you have to not intersect right so you kind of have to do it online and then you like you could do some kind of two dimensional segment tree or stuff but it's not what i like for sure uh okay i guess a is the most is like the most soluble problem here One, four, two, okay. Four, four, two, two, eight, six, four, and eight, six. Yeah, sure. I guess it should be just find the. Should you? Use smallest, okay. The problem does not. Oh, the sequence of output 2k plus 1 numbers, okay. So you have to minimize the number of operations first, and then you also want to minimize the coordinates of the position, like the coordinates where you click. Um, all right. So we can find the, like, could it be, I mean, I just don't know. Is there, like, does the order matter? I mean, I feel like we just should find the first position, like the smallest lexicographical position, which 
allows a cross to be drawn here and then just draw it and just divide this, the whole grid into subgrids and then do the same in all the subgrids. Maybe. I'm not that sure about that. But I just don't see a better way. Okay, seven seconds in this problem. Also not a good sign, I would say. Okay, B. Thanks, Ildar. Um, well. Um, I would expect Ildar to solve this problem to be much better than me in, in such problems. Okay, C. Maybe I should be thinking about C. Um, so it cannot be like DP, right? Because you cannot like do a DP on uh, on a graph, it's not. It's not visible. But then, if I pick a vertex, I also have to pick all the previous ones, right? Right. Okay, what after, like, binary search is a good step. And then after binary search, I guess the problem is, goes like this. So each vertex has some cost. Has some cost. And you want to pick a non-empty subset of vertices which has no ingoing ed incoming edges. Besides that the total cost of vertices is non-negative, I guess. Is it even true? Yeah, probably. How do I do that? The total cost of vertices, which I pick, is non negative. Yeah. It looks like some minimum cut, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, it's just minimum cut, okay. I guess. It's actually similar to one problem from... Uh, I'm teaching a 
uh, some algorithms at ITMO and we have a similar problem in our homework, I think, at some point. Okay. Mm. Are the limits correct? So it's one hundred, one thousand, ten. So the answer is at most one thousand. And if I can do it with average mint, it should be like this. Otherwise, it should be like this. So I want to find whether the total of PI or the total of TI. Is at least X. So the total of PI is at least X times the total of TI. So the total of PI minus X times TI is non-negative, right? Um, okay, PI minus X times TI. And I want uh, can I do the total of co total cost at least zero? And then the solution is we pick all the also orders that must be completed. Okay. Mm. I guess I need some max flow. Right? Yeah. Mm, flow graph F. I have n plus two vertices from n to n plus one. F n from n to i. Uh, or vice versa. I guess whatever I do should be fine. Oh, but actually, mm -hmm. wait a second. Yeah, I can. I can always just do zero work and get the answer of zero. So it doesn't make much sense. I have to be careful here because I have to pick a non-empty subset, obviously, right? Yeah. Hmm. So I want to pick a non-empty subset if possible, right? And that's how I guess I have to use minimum cut here and just check if there is any vertex except the starting one, right? Hmm, okay, okay, okay. So it's, either, so it's either one way or the other. Hmm, maybe, maybe. So 
if the cost is positive okay Okay, so I'll have to fix something to only pick non-empty subsets, but for now I want to see what happens. F, yeah. I don't think my structure of flow is very nice, but it's usable. Yeah, it's not interesting. Yeah, so here all the costs are negative, just negative. Yeah, so as, let's assume I have a vertex of 5 and then a vertex of minus 5 and then this one depends on this one. So if I just do this. Yeah, if I have negative 100 here, then it's the same way. So I, I think I have to reverse. To reverse it. Let's just use modular. So this way should also work, right? And then the condition is either the if answer is positive, then I just return true. Maybe something like that. No, wait. I'm probably still not correct. Okay. Okay. Let's try. I don't mind that. Okay. Test case five. I'm somewhat trying to guess the solution, which is not a good thing. I should just focus and think a bit more. So now I add all the positive vertices. And then when I find the minimum cut, okay, so right now I have something like this, right? Let's say I have five and five.
So in this case, I cannot reach this vertex. So should it be the other way around? Wow, come on. Is it? I'm, I feel like my problem is like, if I have this, I, I will tell zero, right? Yeah, okay. I'll still, yeah, so 41 here. So it's a bit different. Let me check. So if the answer is exactly zero, sometimes I still can do that, right? Yeah, but in this case, so it's five and one hundred. Yeah, so in case of exactly zero, I cannot reach anything anyway. Okay, but the question is which vertices are reachable from the other way. So, okay, so one different way is I can do this and then do this and then do this and also swap here. And maybe now it's better because just the way the equality is handled is different. Hmm, okay, now it's just not better at all. Yeah, it's the same way. But I want to figure out if I can have a minimum cut, which is what? So let's say, let's pick one of the ways. Okay, let's say I picked this one, which is what I can see right now. This is what I have right now, right? Yes, so this way, if I cut this edge, it means that I do not take this vertex. And if I cut this edge, it means that I take this vertex, right? And they want to find which vertices are reachable from the last one, from the... Oh, okay, 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 okay. So maybe... Wait, wait, wait. Maybe it should be... Like this? Come on! But I want it the other way around, right? So I want it this way, and I want it this way, maybe. Still trying to guess, it's not good. But I feel like, like this structure should be the one working, right? Yeah, okay, so let's try this way, right? Okay, so we do five and five. Oh, 
how much time do I have left, by the way? 26 minutes, not good. Um, so I go to the negative ones from the source, I go to, no, I, now I go, yes, from the source I go to negative ones, then I go to positive ones, and then I go to the sink. So in this case, okay, so what about this test case, right? Just one thing, one thing. So there is a zero edge, right? Right. Zero edge, edge zero. No, 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 no. Okay. Uh, debug cut. Just because it doesn't make any sense to me. I want to find out if I can have a minimum cut. Which does not cut all the edges going into the sink. That's kind of the problem. What? Well, it should be correct, no? Shouldn't it? Like you should. What? Oh, okay. Do I have some bug here or what? I don't hope I don't have any bugs in my max flow, but it could be. Oh, could it be actually? Oh, is it what? Wow, 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 wow! Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. wait! I see now. But why did I? Ha why do I have it like this? 
Wow. That's so bad. Okay, okay. I just messed up like the way my max wall is working. Yeah, wow. Wasted so much time. I guess that's just because I wrote that code too long time ago. But it actually goes from the sink, not from the source. And that's the problem. Okay, so everyone is still in B. I have 20 minutes. A does not actually look that good right now. Can I solve B in the remaining time? Bad. But anyway, good that I solved it. But now I'm losing to three people because of that lost time and then correct submission. And I could be not losing, <laughs> I guess. But it's fine. Mm. Okay.
Okay, guys, I have some idea, but not too much time. But maybe I should try. Uh, so Um. And the code is going to be ugly. Hopefully I don't mess anything up in the copy paste. Um... Yeah, something like this. Yeah, well, okay, I'm going berserk with copy paste. Um,
I guess I can do some lower bound here, but it's a bit easier not to think about it. Um, yeah, what have I do? What do I do here? I have the number of things. Okay, take your slow. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, also be careful. Yeah. Like this, right? Yes. And like this. Okay, same for wise. Four places, right? Right. And now less than x a x b x b. I think. And same for y. Something like that. Seven minutes. Okay. If it's correct, then I have some chance. Some good chance, maybe. Mm, whatever. Okay. It's not correct, obviously. Oh, yeah. It is. It's fine. Uh, yeah, like this. Okay, it's correct on the sample. <laughs> but this guy is forcing me to send blindly now. Okay, I can do that. Then I have to test. Can I do stupid? That's a bit dangerous, but anyway. Also, how much memory do I use? It's fine, right? Because one bit set is 12.5 kilobytes times 1000, right? Also, I have to hope it's fast enough, right? It probably is. Um, let's make it 10,000.
I have not to miss the end of the contest. No. Okay. Um, let's try something smaller, maybe. Looks good. And I even have three minutes to spare. What can I do to be more confident? Maybe generate smaller ones, right? Still not so bad. No typos, maybe some. Okay, maybe even smaller rectangles. Yeah, so now it's going to take more time for the stupid solution. Okay. Looks quite convincing. I guess I should just submit. I mean, I guess I cannot do much anyway, even if it's incorrect. If even if I find out right now that it was incorrect and I cannot do anything. Okay, here we go. <sighs> the contest is over now. It's funny how I looked at A, B, C and said that A was the looked the most solvable out of A, B, and C. And then in the end, I guess it was not. <laughs> I hope it's fast enough. I mean, it has to be fast enough, I think. But then, let's see. Yeah, it's very fast. Cool. And there we go. Hooray!
Yeah. I can only win because of blind submission right here. But what else? What, what can I do, right? I'm too weak to win without them. So I have to do it. Disgusting, is it? Okay. Uh, okay, guys. How to solve B? <laughs> Can anyone share? I believe that there should be some solvers in the chat. Yeah, I guess I have to describe my solution, but... Oh, so Ildars had the same solution as me. Wow, okay. Uh, 2D segment 3. N squared time works in 9 seconds out of 12. Uh, your paste bin link is not... Okay, it, it is working, I guess, if I remove the dot. Okay. What do you think about this solution chat? Kevin solved problem seven to four. Yes, I am proud, Kevin. Um, nice solution, I guess. Mm. Oh, so you, you even use just one array instead of four. And is that what makes the difference? Yeah, the tick in the leaderboard means blind. It's the second time I win because of blind submission solution on the last minute. Correct. Uh, okay, nice solution. I mean, I thought some, about something like that, but I guess you have to... Also, I, I'm not sure if Pragmas help on the Yandex contest. I, I've had some experience and I felt like they don't. But tell me if if they actually do, because I'm not sure about that. And then, yeah, I didn't have the idea to just make one array, I guess it might be useful. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, this code is someone in the chat. Uh, gave a link to this code for problem B, which is just n square, but apparently it works fast enough for 12 seconds and 10 to 5 squared. Pragmas speed up this one by one second, okay. And I wonder if having just one array speeds it up. Probably it does. Yeah. Uh, glibcxs debug is, let me, Mm, let me show this. So there is this blog post which I found useful at some point. I'm not sure if it's up to date at the moment. And also some of these features don't work on Windows as far as I know. So the blog post is this. And it gives some tips about catching mistakes locally. And one of the tips is you can use actually the deb debug flag, which is uh, underscore glibc access underscore debug. And if you define this flag before including any of the STL features, or like containers stuff, then if you go out of bounds in vector or set or whatever, do something invalid, then you will get a runtime error. And uh, but the the cost of this is that it slows down the time, like like the speed of your solution. So you don't want to just define it every time. So what I do is I just have this. A flag defined in my command line compilation and I undef it if I want to try to run my solution faster um, locally. Just to check if it's fast enough, I turn it off. So at the server, 
it looks as if my code just undefines a flag which is not defined anyway. So it does just does nothing. This line, the undef, but it speeds up the execution locally for me. Uh, so yeah, you can check out this block and use some of these compilation flags and stuff. I think it might be useful for some of you, but you still have to like be able to figure out what's going on and also it's useful if you can find the bugs yourself, but sometimes it's helpful just if you need extra speed. All right, so uh, Andrew was also asking about problem B. I guess I, yeah, so there, there are some solutions to B. Let's see, so Igor described his solution. Segment tree by X, we have two sets of segments for each vertex. Those that cover this segment completely, not propagated down, and those that at least touch this segment. Mm, okay. And what next? So you just maintain these sets of segments and they allow you to... Okay. Uh, I guess I see. Doesn't look easy. Uh, but, all right. So my solution is... I want to, like, for each rectangle, I want to find out if it intersects any of the previous rectangles which were added to the set. Instead of just finding which of the rectangles which were added to the set are intersected by our next rectangle, let's find the bit set none. <laughs> it will be the bit set of all rectangles, of all n rectangles, even including this one. But obviously, we intersect you, you intersect with itself, so you won't be in this bit set ever. But we'll find the bit set of all rectangles which do not intersect with the ice rectangle. Okay? So we want to find this bit set. And what is the bit set of rectangles which do not intersect with the given rectangle? It is you have to find all the rectangles which have the right border smaller than our left border, rectangles which have their left border to the right of our right border, and also like the same for y coordinate. So you just uh, find four bit sets for rectangles which are to the left of ours, to the bottom of ours, to the top of ours, and to the right of ours, we just OR all of, this, all of these bit sets. We find one big bit set which describes which rectangles our current one does not intersect with. And then we just check if the set of included rectangles is fully included into our bit set of non-intersecting rectangles. And if it is, then we have to pick our rectangle to the answer. And then to find the bit set of rectangles which are to the left of our current rectangle, we do some preprocessing. We sort all rectangles by their left, right, top and bottom borders. And we find some prefix bit sets for all for like for all of these uh, four sets of rectangles, for ways to order the rectangles, we find the prefix bit sets with bits set in the corresponding indices. So for example, here I sort all the rectangles by their left borders, but in decreasing order. And then I want to find the prefix bit sets for this ordering. I just go from left to right, and for each rectangle I set a bit at some position, and unfortunately I cannot save all the prefix bit sets because that would take too much memory but i can set i can save all the bit sets uh, every 100 rectangles i use so after every 100 rectangles i save the bit set and so that allows me to just use a 
one prefix bit set, which is saved in the memory, and then also use, like, put at most 100 more ones in the set. Um, yeah, so that's like this. So we have to do that for all four directions. So I just had four times more code than I wanted to, but so, so I have 165 lines. Maybe I could do it with 40 if I just had more time to think about implementation. So this is n square over 64 or whatever, obviously, right? Uh, yeah, but segment three solves it in n log square. So I guess it's a better solution. Like obviously it's better than n square, but this one is maybe easier to implement. Yeah, I think it's a cute one. I think it's a cute solution. Oof, that's it. Uh, does anyone have any ideas for problem A, by the way? Because like, I'm not even sure if you just, you can just do it greedily. I, I'm not sure if you can do greedy here. Yeah, you cannot just take any valid point. Uh, do you have a, I mean, I guess I can figure out why, but I'm not sure about the actual test case. Is it easy to... Yeah, I guess it's easy to find to build a test case, right? Three horizontal plus three vertical lines. Okay. Let's go for our lovely little notepad. Okay. Mm, actually, notepad is again not not so great. I guess I I will go. I will resort to far. Mm, okay. Oops. Mm, I guess I blocked my notepad, like my laptop, by accident. Is it fine now? I hope the stream is fine. Not sure how it looked like. Okay. Okay, so the test case is like this. Let's say we have three horizontal lines and three vertical lines. So you have to pick the middle line first, the middle position. So that after you take the middle position, you can just use four, four smaller crosses out there. But if you just take the top right position, the top left position, for example, uh, in, in this rectangle, you cannot just uh, do whatever. You cannot just do anything, right? Yeah, after so taking the point, I, I have to consider four subregions. So one challenge is definitely how to do it quickly enough. Maybe some topological search and whatever, but the biggest challenge right now is how to find the first move, because in this case, for example, you have d nine different first moves, but you cannot just... Uh, do whatever, any, any of them, right? A three times three dense grid is different from this grid. Yeah, so for example, if you have this test case, you can go with the top left, right? You go with the top left, you just mark out uh, the first row and the first column, then you go with the middle cell and then the bottom right corner, right? Hmm. Yeah, it looks really hard. I, I don't have any ideas right now. Interesting. Uh, so, out of guys also solved the problem. So, is C 
Ah, oh, well, not, not so many of them, but anyway, so is C binary search and the minimum cut? Is that what people did? I guess it should be, but so I, I had uh, I had the biggest time, the biggest trouble with uh, figure out if we can have a non-empty subset. So basically, you do binary search. 1000 times cost plus one. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, that's clever. That's clever. Can I just figure out the non empty subset part by being binary searching on doubles? Um, yeah, I guess. I have to be a bit careful with rounding, but I guess if the, like, I only have problem, only have, like, troubles if the answer is exactly integer. That's, like, I guess test case 5 was the first test case which had an integer answer, and that's why I got wrong answer in test case 5. But yeah, I guess if I do binary search on doubles, then for all strictly smaller values than the correct one, I will get go to the right. And for the correct value and all the higher ones, I will have to go to the left. But they will still converge around the correct value, right? So I just have to be careful with rounding after that. And also, yes, like Andrew mentioned, uh, doing max flow on doubles is also not so easy. I mean, I guess my template should work, but you have to be careful. For example, it's known that when uh, you can have non-integer capacities and yeah, non-integer capacities, you, some algorithms of maximum flow just Never finish. Uh, presentation error is uh, basically that you oh, it's actually interesting because some time ago Code Forces just removed the presentation error verdict completely, um, and now you can only get wrong answer instead of it. So some people might not know what presentation error is, but in general. So I guess, in terms of code forces, you can think that presentation error is just the wrong answer. But in general, presentation error is what you get when, for example, you uh, input output two integers when you had to output one integer, or vice versa. Uh, here, I guess, you don't get presentation error out of nothing, because you always print n double values. So in problem D, let me get back to it. You had to output n floating point values. So my guess is that your solution, uh, you had some kind of bug which made your solution output either infinity, and if you output an infin infinite value, it will probably be output like plus inf or minus inf which is not a valid double, so I guess you cannot read it, but you can print it. So you output it, and it, it's a string, so I guess you cannot just read it when the checker cannot read it, so that's why it's showing printation error. That could be one reason, and another one could be not a number, which is also a string. Uh, I wrote m equal to l plus r <laughs> divided by 1. <laughs> instead of L plus R divided by 2? <laughs> which problem? Is it... Which problem was that? But how does it even work at all? D? <laughs> yeah, plus 10, I guess. I mean, just you doing your things, right? <laughs> uh, 
How how does it even I mean how does it work at all? How I wonder. But how can you I mean but why is it correct after that? I just don't understand. Because the point you try is outside is outside the range, right? Because when you have two Did you so <laughs> did you output doubles by changing them to strings? Char by char? Did you parse doubles on your own? Did you like make your own function to string? Would be fun. Uh no, you did not have to Yeah, okay. You did not have to bind research in problem D because um, like my solution does no binary searching. Uh, I have just sorting and two pointers in my solution. So I guess I can describe my solution quickly for this problem. So basically, uh, let's get back to the incredible, incredibly huge picture. Okay, that's the picture we have on this problem. So the problem is just f is from SNSS 2019. Yeah, that's what I thought. I, I felt like maybe this problem could appear on SNSS before, but that's sad. <laughs> Did you tell Snark? At some point, I was thinking if I can just go to find like find my own code from before. But I mean, yeah, you, you told him, but I guess you cannot do much. Uh, yeah. Okay, that's <laughs> SNSS folders from his PC suddenly disappeared. Okay. <laughs> okay. Makes sense. So should we expect some more problems from... I, I guess I have to revise SNSS 2019 before the next two rounds. Just to make sure I know where to copy problems, solutions from. No. Never mind. That's not good. Uh, okay. So what do we have here? We have some triangles, we have, uh, and then we have some queries. The query is a horizontal line, so we are given the coordinate of this line. So it's 4 in this case. And you need to find the total area of the black triangles here. So we just cut the whole structure and we want to find the area of black triangles. So we can see that... Uh, actually, I guess I have to use paint. Let me see what I can do. Or maybe let me just go here. Okay, so each tri uh, each triangle can be treated independently, basically. Um, so each triangle has, for each triangle, only base length D and height H are important. So we find that, those two values, and then if we cut with a line of Y equal to Y, if y is greater than h, add do nothing. Otherwise, we have to add the area of this black triangle. And we can 
find the formula is d times h minus y squared d over 2h times h minus 1 squared to the answer. So basically that's the formula we need and uh, that gives us a square solution. We have too many triangles, too many queries, but if we could check all the triangles for each query, then we would easily just find the answer by these formulas. So we have to optimize it. And the idea to optimize it is uh, just sort triangles, uh, triangles heights, which is h and line coordinates uh, together, or you can just, that's what I say here, but I sorted only one of them and then I, I sorted them independently, actually, and then just moved two pointers, but uh, it doesn't matter. So I just sort them together in, dec in decreasing order. Also know that we can transform this equation, so it's uh, first this, uh, this is equal to uh, minus, let's say, minus times h times y plus uh, d over 2h times y squared and times 2 here. Okay, so the idea is that we have some part of the answer which is multiplied by 1 effectively. Then we have some part which is multiplied by y and some part which is multiplied by y squared. So basically we want to find for all the triangles which have h at least y greater than or equal to y, we want to find the sum of all these values which are the coefficients of ones in these sums, uh, these values which are the coefficients of y's and these values which are the coefficients of y squared. And then we just, to do that, we, we can just sort the triangles, like the high, the, all the like events we have. If we go from top to bottom, we have two types of events. One type of event is we have a query, we have a line here which cuts the triangles. And another event, type, type of events is uh, we encounter the triangle. So some triangle starts to be cut by our line. And we just maintain the sum of ones coefficients for traversed triangles, uh, the sum of y's coefficients, and the sum of y squares, y squares coefficients. Uh, and when we encounter a line at y equal to y, just uh, find the answer as sum of 1 plus sum of y times y plus sum of y squared times y squared. Like, so in, in my code it was uh, sum 2 is the coefficient before the second power of y, sum 0 is the coefficient before the zeroth power of y, and sum 0, sum 1, sum 0, as you can see. So that's the formula here. So we just maintain three sums, and as we go from right, from bottom to top, if we if we encounter a triangle, then we change the maintained sums, and if we encounter a line, then we find the answer here. So in this case, that's my solution. That's my code. As you can see, I sorted the events independently, but it doesn't matter that much we can just use two pointers afterwards. So I, for each triangle I find the base length and the height. I sort all the events. The events here are only triangles, but anyway. I also get all the queries and I also sort them. And I maintain three sums. Sum 0, sum 1, sum 2. And j is the second pointer, and i is the first pointer, which is traversed in a for loop. 
and rest are the answers. So I am doing the problem offline. I am just uh, like lazy here. Otherwise, I could use binary search and prefix sums, and it would also work. So, and then I just go from left to right. I move the second pointer while this rectangle, this triangle's height is greater than the line's coordinate. I have to process this triangle. I get back to its height and base length, and I change the coefficients here. And then I just find the answer, just as I said before. So the code is just 50 lines. That's pretty short for this problem. And I think most of the approaches should be equivalent. So I guess you could use some segment trees or binary index trees, but, but you don't need them. You can just use prefix, like accumul accumulated sums. If you sort them together, then yes, you have to main, like you have to, if you want to sort stuff together, you want, you, you have to remember the type of the event. Right. Uh, yeah, so that's it for problem D. Hopefully it was useful. Mm. So we have discussed C. Did C is, uh, well, it's a bit, I mean, C is kind of hard if you don't know much about maximum flows and minimum cuts, but once you know about them, it's like a practice problem somewhat after you do binary search. Uh, online solution to D, as I said, is you do the same for events. Like, okay, you don't create the query events, you only cre create the triangle events. So this part of the solution would be the same. But afterwards, I mean, I can, I can do that actually. I mean, I can just transform this offline solution to an online solution and it would be quite fast. So this part stays the same. Afterwards, I will, so instead of three variables, I will have to use three arrays right now. Uh, so that's what I do here. Uh, that's what I do here. So I just find the prefix sums of this of these variables. And then if I get some y coordinate, uh, basically I can do binary search here, or I can even do lower bound, but I have to do custom comparator, but like, yeah, binary search would be easier to implement right now. If events mid first is at least y, then I go to the left, otherwise I go to the right, and I think that would do it. So maybe, maybe maybe it's even easier to do it online. Actually, I feel like this solution might even be easier. Also, if you can use lower bound here, it, the, the code will be shorter. I mean, you can, obviously, but... So now it's 52 lines, and this one was 53 lines. But it can also be shortened by, like, 10. But yeah, just the same. Uh, yeah. So what else? So we have no idea about A still. No one has any ideas in the chat either. 
But yeah, I guess just a hard problem. But I mean, I just don't know how to just start. Like, what do you do start with? That's the main problem, I think. The main trouble. Um, all right. So problem E was also here. We have to find the number of sequences of n integers such that the sequence is non-decreasing. Okay, this one also passes at the same time, but it takes more memory because we have to find three or some arrays, but time is the same. So it's fine. So we want to find the number of sequences which are non-decreasing. Each number is between 0 and x, and the bitwise xor of all numbers is x. So, I mean, this problem has like three lines, and I missed the first line initially. I just, I mean, I don't know. There are three lines that I have to read, and I just missed it. I just could not, could not read. But anyway, it didn't take too much time for me. So Ilar says that he used a uh, fast Walsh-Adamar Walsh transform in E. Okay, what's your complexity? Is it like n square log n? Oh, there's n and x, but yeah. Yeah, the solution is EasyDP, so I guess I can just... The non-decreasing thing seem re seems really hard. Still n cube, okay. So my solution is kind of easy, so I have dp of i, j, k, whatever. A number of ways to pick the first i values in the sequence uh, so that the last value is at most j <coughs> and the XOR, XOR of all values is k and then the like initially dp000 is 1 as you can see base case and then transitions are Uh, don't like don't use j as the next value go to dp i plus i j plus 1 and keep XOR exchange un unchanged and the other is use j as the next value go to dp i plus 1, j, k, xor, j. That's it. And because it's it's on the border of memory limit to have a three-dimensional array, I still went for three-dimensional one, but I only maintained two layers of the dp, because as you can see, the value of i only changes by one here, or does not change at all. So I don't need to save all the layers, I can only save two of them. The current one, which is i, and the next one, which is i plus one. And after I fill the i plus one layer, I can just forget about the i layer. So that's why I only maintain two layers, and I just index them by their parity. So layer i will be stored at i modulo two, as here. And yeah, that's basically it. Whoa, we have a raid. Eknerwala, Andrew, thanks for the raid. 
22 people. I, I wonder how many people were following both of the streams, but anyway, thanks a lot for the raid. Uh, welcome everyone. I guess you were looking at this, the same contest, so you should know what's going on here. But yeah, we, I, I'm discussing the solutions now. I am talking about problem E. And yeah, again, if you go in reverse, it's easier. Um, yeah, it is. I mean, I, I'm just not used at that, but I mean, yeah, you can just write all the transitions in reverse and then it's more obvious, I guess. I, it's just more obvious that the solution work, works, right? But yeah, this way it also works. I guess, I mean, if you're just learning DP, I would assume that doing backwards DP is easier in many cases. Just because you only feel the, like you only focus on the current cell and you figure out how to evaluate its value. And you just use some previous cells for that. But anyway. Yeah, it's slightly easier for you to start with max equal to x. Yeah, I see, I see, I see. I mean, oh, that way. Uh, okay, I, I, I don't think that matters too much. Is it? Does it? I mean, whatever. Uh, someone asked, how, my, how does my solution take care of non-decreasing? So the point is that uh, the value of j never decreases in this dp. So basically, I either use the current value as the next value, or I go to the next one. So I only put the values in non-decreasing order of their value. So that's how I take care about take care of non-decreasing. Just go through the values in this order. Like I just never go from j to j minus one. So I don't use the a smaller value at a later position. Uh, that's it. Mm. What specifications do I use? Yeah, I guess I should do like Andrew and make comments like PC uh, keyboard, right? But I'm using Dell, X Dell XPS 13 laptop and I'm just using the built-in keyboard in that laptop, and I'm pretty happy with that. I've been using this laptop for three and a half years, and it's pretty good. But yeah, some people could see it was lagging at some points, but I'm not sure. Maybe I'm just bad. Yeah, actually, I guess I should free, free up some space on my hard drive, by the way. It's pretty important, I would say. But for now, it's pretty filled up. Maybe it will be faster if I do that. Uh, so, how do you actually solve it in n cube with trans uh, other more transform? How how do you actually do that? N cube is oh someone said I thought n cube is too slow. So it's five hundred cube is one twenty five million. But as you can see, the operations here are, are very simple. It's just set to zero is easy. And then uh, here I have plus equal. But I use the modular values. I guess you can still write modular operations operation here and it will be fine. You can also use the simple if because after you add this, so if I was if I were to write this line with usual int, so I could write int here instead of mint, and then I could write if this value is greater than or equal to modular, then just subtract modular, and do the same for this line, but with the correct dp value. This is a useful trick when you're adding values, you don't have to do modular, you can do just if and subtract, and it could be faster. And also in this line, you just fix that and you're good to go without any classes for modular int. So it's not that 
much of a difference. But it's still a bit nice to have it. Welcome to all the new followers. Welcome, welcome. But anyway, that was for problem E. Uh, what else do we have? Problem F was a bit messy DP on I mean, as I said, I mean, you don't actually need to make your own Mint class. I mean, I have I built it like, I don't know, a year ago, maybe a little, but before that, I always just used ints. I wrote some custom functions. So uh, before that, before I had, I, I like, before I made some, cla some classes for modular ints, I just had functions like this. And that's what I wrote if I needed modular ints. And then uh, if I had such uh, these functions, I would just, instead of plus equal, I would just write this. And here I would just write this. And that's it. I, and I, again, I don't use any class in this case. And I wasn't using it like until a year or two ago. And it did not really make me sick or something. It's just when you are doing only like, like at many levels, it does not matter much if you just spend half a minute to implement two functions. But in general, if you like, I mean, it's not like if you use this class, you're just going to be super fast and just beat everyone because of that. In most cases, it will not even matter. But sometimes, <laughs> at some levels, maybe solving the problem in 1 minute or 1 minute 30 seconds could matter. Uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, yeah, I don't feel much about explaining solution to problem F. It's quite involved, I'd say. Uh, it's mostly a tool to keep your code cleaner, avoid bugs. Yeah, I guess, I guess. You have to, in particular, when I was using my functions like add and mal, I, like, the, the biggest thing is not to forget to use them. So it's bad when you have your functions and then you just write the usual plus equal and just overflow. That's bad. So you have to be careful about that. But yeah, I guess you can also do better on average. Uh, yeah, sure. So F, let's at least go through the solution. Uh, so my solution, oh, yeah, yeah, actually I have a good idea. I have to check this, I have to check, what was that, Snark New Summer Series? I wonder which round was it. Maybe I can find my solution from before and compare them. It should be fun. Ildar, if you're still here, what round was that? Uh, round 2B. Oh, okay. That's quite different. <laughs> okay, I, I was already using the class, but the solution is super different. Well, maybe not super, but... <laughs> it's funny.
Okay, so that's my solution from before. And here I only use one array for dp, but I also have an extra dimension. Not sure what's happening, what's going on here. And this is my solution today. Oh, so also a year ago it had multi multiple test cases, and today it has only one test case. <laughs> it's very interesting. How, did, how, how could it even happen? I guess Snark does change the test cases by hand. Maybe he splits them into individual ones. Whatever, never mind. <clears throat> or maybe he just joins them also. Uh, so my solution here is uh, I go from right to left. I maintain like... Mm, Let's say I have, so I have some uh, knights here, which I haven't processed yet. So I have some knights to the left of my border, and I have processed all the knights to the right. And I want to say that I have some knights which are going to the left, and only them. And then I have my ends knight here, which is also maybe going to the left, but I mean, eventually it, like, he will be going to the left, but it doesn't matter. Uh, let's say that the end knight also goes to the left. So I want to maintain this structure, which says I have, pro I, I have processed until knight i, and j, the second parameter, is how many knights I have going to the left together with the end one. And then I uh, have two options at each position. If the next knight is a, a zero, let's say it's an easier case, this knight is also going to the left. So I can just move it to the left of to right of the border and increase j by one. So basically I just go from j to j plus one in at every position. From ij, I go to i minus one, j plus one. And the other case is a knight which goes to the right. And then, so I have this knight here. I want to process it, and I have two options. If, like, two options at every position. So first, the knight which goes to the right, and the first knight which goes to the left will have to fight. And I have two options. If the knight going to the left wins, then this knight just goes away, and it just continue. So this is one case. From ij, I go to i minus one j which means I have processed knight i, and I have j knights going to the left. And another case is the knight going to the right wins. In this case, I throw away the knight which goes to the left, and I also have to continue processing the, i, the next knight, because it could also win this one, it could also beat this one, it could also beat this one, it could also beat this one, and eventually it could go to fight with the end knight. So I have to continue. So from ij, I go to i, j minus 1. And I divide here by 2, all the, all the variables, because I both events happen with probability 1 half. And eventually, if I have no more knights remaining in front of my end knight, which could protect him, our end knight will have to fight with the knight going to the right. So, from i0, I go to i minus 1, 0, but I divide by 2 here because we don't have to win. So, now answering the question about what, what, are, what the variables mean. Uh, b, i, j is the probability that we arrive at a situation i, j basically. So b i j is the probability that we got to, this, to, to the state where we have i knights, uh, we have processed all knights up to the i's, and we have j knight go, knights going to the left. And here we don't care if any knight actually beats the end knight, 
We only want to know the probability that we arrive at that state. Uh, hi there. Yes, I I am doing competitive programming and I have done a contest today which had six problems and I am now talking about the solutions. I guess it should be hard to catch up exactly what's going on, but you're welcome to try and uh, also I will have a stream at a similar time, but a bit you'd like to come a bit earlier later and yeah, competitive programming is, uh, what's that? I mean, it has a Wiki Wikipedia page, right? There's a Wikipedia page com at competitive programming, I'm pretty sure. Should I put it into some description or what? Or... Yeah, I guess. This one is good, but... Also, yeah, it also has my picture. <laughs> Basically, you're, you're trying, you're solving, yeah, it's kind of a mind sport where you solve algorithmic problems and try to be faster than others. Right. Okay, so bij was the probability that we arrive at that state, and win ij is the probability that we arrive at that state. And also beat all everyone. So right here, right when I look at it, uh, it's kind of funny, right? Because if you just look at the code, it's not easy to notice that I don't need the b array, right? That's kind of the joke, because I. Win array doesn't never uh, depend on B. For some reason, when I was implementing the solution, I thought it could, but apparently it doesn't. So I can just do this. No, no, no worries. You didn't bother me. That's fine. Uh, yeah, so I don't need the B array. Thanks for your question, Eric. Uh, obviously, you can see that this array was not needed at all. Mm, yeah, it's funny. If I go from left to right instead, I use the equivalent to B. Uh, let's think. Actually, my old solution went from left to right, right? But I think it's pretty similar. Oh, okay, okay. So from left to right, we go from left to right and we keep the same variables basically, right? We keep, oh, we, okay, okay, okay. We only maintain B and not win, right? Because we don't need to fight the ends knight with the guys. So we just maintain the probability that we have that number of knights going to the right. And then finally in the end, what is X by the way, I wonder? Why did I have an, another one, another variable? But whatever. So the thing is, we just maintain the number of knights going to the right, and then in the final state, when we know the number of knights going to the right, we can find just the probability that we uh, beat that number of knights, which is 1 over 2 to the power of the number of knights, right? Yeah, okay, I, I see your point, Andrew, but you also say that this allows you to solve for all nights, but I guess it will be n cube then, because yeah, yeah, yeah. If you compute b in both directions, you can compute probability of win for each individual night. But mm, okay, I guess it, it's not n cube, but or is it? Let me think. Because for each night you have like. You have the probability distribution of the number of knights going like towards you from the left and from the right. And can you just convolute it? Convolve it? 
Yeah. Those two are independent. Oh, yeah. So I have to find the probability of winning. This is just multiplication of winning the guys on the left and on the right, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. So it's just an n square for all knights. Yeah, that's a, that's a bit cooler. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see your point. <coughs> I see your point. Yeah, that's a bit cooler. I mean, I guess if it occurred to me that I can go in the other direction, it would be a bit easier for me to think about this problem, but anyway, it's fine. Uh, oh, you implemented the probability. Yeah, the problem is not, like, it's not clear that you only have to find probability for the nth night, right? N, the, s, night. Translation is not great for some reason. But you only need to find one probability, so maybe. You, you can deduce it from here, but from the problem, maybe you, you, you could think that you have to pro calculate the probability for all nights, right? Uh, okay, that's it for F, I guess. Mm, so we're pretty much done with the problems. We have not discussed C in detail, but again, I guess there are no different solutions, so... I guess we can keep it as is. Mm. What else do we have about this contest, or maybe something else? Um, so the plans for the next days, for the coming days, are, by the way, we can see in this blog post. Oops, no, I don't want to write a new entry. I want to open the, an old one. So in this blog post, you can find the schedule of the next rounds. So the next rounds are going to happen in two and four days, respectively, from today. So it's the day after tomorrow and the day after the day after the day after tomorrow. And I'm going to be... Streaming in two days for sure, and in four days for sure. And tomorrow we have a division one contest, by the way. Uh, so I'm going to take part in that one. And uh, Andrew. Andrew Eknerwala will be streaming a recap of that round tomorrow, as you can see in this blog post. Yeah, I'm just promoting you, it's fine. So, in this blog post, Be sure to follow Andrew tomorrow with his stream, which will contain a recap for the tomorrow's round and also a virtual upsolving of a previous Division 3 round. <clears throat> um. Yeah, let's see what we have, and I guess I'll call it today soon. But let's figure out the things we have in the chat. So we have a question. Why didn't I go for test data 2 of musical chords in Google Code Jam, even though I had more than 45 minutes? Was that not enough time, or you knew that no one else will be able to solve it? It's an interesting question. So, uh, basically, my intuition was indeed telling me that no one was going to solve it 
or maybe just a couple of people because like it looked very hard and initially even the small test case was looked really hard initially but then i realized the solution it was very easy actually but the hard test case looked like very difficult i mean like i mean the test set too i just i just had zero ideas for that one and another thing is that even if I figure out the way to solve it, the implementation difficulty is still going to be high. It's pretty obvious for the problem, just because it's very... I mean, it can be too easy. Just because you have some signs and formulas which get you the length of the chord, you want to find k, biggest chords which is could be which could be up to 10 so we have to find the biggest one then remove it and find the next biggest one so it just wasn't not going to be easy so i just decided to figure out i just decided to focus on checking my solutions to all the remaining problems basically i took some time thinking about musical chords hard but Eventually, I just decided against trying to solve it. Just because I kind of expected no one to be able to solve it. And actually, it happened. A lot of people solved the easy one, but couldn't solve the hard test, test set. And yeah, I think that was, in general, a good decision, a good practical decision. But no one ever solved all the test sets in a Google Code Jam final, as far as I remember. So that would be a nice fit. Maybe... I could go for that if I was to set it, to set this goal, but I guess it's just very hard. Uh, yeah, there are no direct tickets to the Google Codium finals anymore for like three or four years already, but it wasn't invented. It, it was in place for a couple of years, I think. Uh, indeed, it's a good rule. I, I mean, can't say anything about it because it allowed it allowed it would have allowed me to qualify for several more times. I mean, not more times, but it would make my life easier and less stressful. But it's also not about me. I mean, even if it was not me who was winning, I think I would still prefer to have this rule. I think it's actually nice. But eventually, yeah, the organizer decided against keeping it. But, yeah, I mean, I guess it's up to them. And obviously I don't have, like, <laughs> no blame on them. I mean, it's totally fine. But, yeah, I agree. It, it was a good rule, so I would prefer to have it. <clears throat> uh, let's see the solution to B, which is written by Eric. I brought to B and after the contest. He maintains two segment trees, one for X and one for Y, and maintains the border borders of added rectangles. Oh. So you... So you just check the intervals on X and intervals on Y, and... Uh, And what that? And how do you? How do you check if your okay one point of view the two intervals intersect if one contains an endpoint of the other? So there are four cases for x and y. Yeah, that's that's true. But but I mean, so if two rectangles intersect on their x and do not intersect on their Ys. How do you handle that case? I don't see yet. In each node in segment 3, keep intervals of blocked cells. Okay, so it's, it's still kind of two-dimensional segment 3, correct? Because you in each node, you still maintain some intervals. So, I mean, it's not two-dimensional segment 3, as such, but still, it's kind of two-dimensional. You cannot, you cannot just uh, solve this problem in one dimension. 
independently, obviously. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. And then it's fun that, oh, Andrew had one dimensional segment tree with divide and conquer. Uh, oh, okay, so I see. So we just have a half, half, a half of the rectangles, solve it for the first half, half, and then you find which rectangles in intersect with the taken rectangles from the left part. And it's just some easy scan line, right? Yeah. Plain sweep. So we have to compress coordinates and yeah. And it's just, that's actually a nice solution. I, I wish I, I came up with that one because it's actually, I think it's still harder to implement than mine. And maybe I wouldn't be in time to implement yours, but I like your solution. I think it's nice. I think it's easier than two dimensional stuff, but that's subjective, obviously. Okay. Yeah, so it's not a bad problem after all, as I thought it to be. <clears throat> it's pretty good. You actually didn't do any coordinate compression? Mm, oh, because you have only n log n queries to a large segment tree and you just clean it up after the operations, so you just do all the operations you did in reverse, right? Or do you? Yeah, you just cleaned up, okay. So that's a trick to maintain an, an epoch. What, what does that mean? Oh, you just, you don't clean it. So we just have like snapshot of the state. No, no, you cannot. I, I'm not sure what you mean, but an epoch. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So epoch means that you don't clean up the memory. You just, for each cell in the memory, you remember the, like, the last time you ch changed it, and then at some points when you want to clean the memory, you just incre like increase the timer, and then every cell which was changed before the timer is just uh, considered to be empty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We are maintaining a max sec tree. Yeah, add to range and maximum on range, right? <clears throat> max pair int int epoch wow okay <laughs> that's that's neat that's neat i like it that's fun all right uh so whatever uh, will there be an editorial? Unfortunately, pretty sure there won't be any editorials. So, yeah, maybe we will never learn how to solve A. But I can ask Snark News to send me the writer's solution. I, I think there could be no editorial at all, but we can find the... At least we can get the code, I think, if I ask the organizer. So maybe I will do that and then discuss this problem later. That's a good idea, actually. But maybe I cannot understand the code. Then, then maybe the, everyone in the chat will help me. So anyway, I guess it's time to wrap it up. We've had a pretty good result today, <laughs> as two previous times. Uh, luckily, we were able to win again with a blind submission in the last minute, which is not what I would prefer. I would prefer with me winning with open submissions, but as some people say, a win is a win. So I'll take it. Uh, hi, Medium. Mm. Would we like to do some fun streams? Possibly. Um, okay. 
Also, Andrew raided me. So I don't have anyone to raid in return. What should I do? Chess. I love to see you, Eknarwala, Erikto, and other people playing chess together. Sure. Should I raid you to a chess stream today? Do you think it's a good idea? Okay, no answer, no suggestions in the chat. Um, Uh, yeah, guys, <laughs> follow this channel, that's for sure. Thanks for all the new follows from today. And be sure to follow to not to miss the next stream. So as I said earlier, the next stream is going to be in two days from now, a bit earlier than that. But at the same time, it's about 10 p.m. Moscow time. So uh, be sure to figure out your own time. Uh, thanks for the explanations. And... Sure, why not? Let's try to rate a chess stream. So I'm going to rate uh, Peter Swidler, who is an eight-time Russian chess champion. And I've watched some of his streams, and I enjoyed them pretty much. I'm not sure how, about the ethics of rating, because if you're just someone, whatever, someone from the street, I mean, you can still rate everyone else, I guess, but... I'm just not sure, I mean, if you don't know someone, I mean, that's maybe how you get to know some people, right? So let's, let's do it, I mean, shouldn't be anything bad. So he's doing some chess right now, some fast chess, so maybe you can enjoy it. Okay, uh, thanks. I think you rate people with less watching. Yeah, that could be true. I mean, maybe that's more ethical. But uh, the question is, can I get anyone streaming programming? I mean, probably I can get someone streaming programming, but competitive programming is not the most often streamed thing, which we would like. We, we would like to make it more streamable and more streamed. But I guess, as far as I can see, no one is doing it right now. So whatever, let's do a raid today and we'll see how it goes. Uh, thanks everyone for the views. And see you in two days. Bye bye. Have fun. And stay safe.